Hey, what's up, y'all? We're back with another one. Let's check this clip out. James Feature and Clark have set viewership records on six different networks in Tuesday night's Fever Aces game in Vegas at the highest regular season single game attendance in the W since 1999. Oh, 20,366 people. What arena is that? Uh, that's T-Mobile. T-Mobile right? They moved it from their, their normal arena to, to T-Mobile. So the league was growing before Clark and Reese came through, but what has the Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese effect meant for the W this season? Yeah, it's been everything. I mean, you see, like, other players are benefiting from mm-hmm. it. It's not just them. It's not just this rookie class. But my favorite part about all of this has been seeing the rookies on the floor. And, like, everyone has always wondered, like, why doesn't the college fandom follow the pro, like, all them when they get to the pros because for so many years, rookies were just buried on the bench, mm. their confidence crushed, like snuffed out, and then the next season they're like, oh, well, you're not good enough, so we're going to just cut you or we're going to put you on another team because we don't think you belong here, you don't, we don't think you're good enough. So I've just been really excited for the, the young players getting an opportunity early to learn faster and get comfortable faster and like kind of cement themselves in these organizations earlier than, like, my, I mean, I barely played my rookie season. I wish I had the opportunity to get on the court my rookie year, but. So do you think that just a business, business sense that, that some of these teams are starting to realize that the, the girls that's coming into or WNBA, they have the following and it might be in their best interest. Yeah, to put them on the floor. To put them on the floor, so. And yeah, I mean, you clearly see the contrast. The top (laughs) teams have no rookies playing. Mm -hmm. The bottom teams have rookies playing. But at the end of the day, only one team is gonna win a championship, Mm -hmm. and this is a business. Everything that's happening right now in the WNBA can be contributed to the conversations that we've had on this couch. And I don't wanna say that they ain't listening to everybody else on the outside, but I think that our points that we've made strategically on the marketing side, on women being more women, in in the element of the NBA, like the way they've been dressing, coming out, being more feminine, where guys are looking like, yo, who is that? Like they're double backing, playing the rookies more, the visibility being on ESPN more, NBA TV more. Now we know where we can go and watch a game, YouTube TV. These are all avenues where the, the NBA, WNBA has grown mm-hmm. within the last six months, maybe. Yeah. So now we're looking at an aspect where the more we keep talking about little tidbits of corrections that they can implement, maybe they hear them, maybe they don't, but we can see that changes have been made in a short amount of time where rookies are playing now, where we're, we're hyping up Andrew Reese to the point where she can be ahead of her time early on. In, I mean, she's going to go down as one of the best rebounders in the league. Look at that. Like, and if we're not watching, we wouldn't even... We wouldn't even know it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now we get to see it. We already knew offensively, like when when people were saying she should go back to school, it was basically to work on your offensive game a little bit more. Yeah. Yep. But that no one said anything about her defense and her rebound, and they already knew she was <coughs> that that's what she does. Yeah. Right? So from here it's just, you know, she's gonna get her rebounding is gonna be elite. Forever. Year after year, summer after summer, she's just going to have to work on her offensive side so her offensive side can catch up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right now, she's just still raw. Yeah. She's just raw from the uh, from the, the, the offensive side. I mean, and once her offensive game catches up mm-hmm. to that, her rebounds might go down a little bit because mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. she will probably start making those shots. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, she's high level at yeah. that. But now All-Star, along with Clark, uh, and both of them are currently the front runners for Rookie of the Year. Clark, the fastest player in WMA history with 300 points, 100 rebounds, 100 assists. Angel was named Rookie of the Month for June, in the midst of a single-season record. Leverage straight double-double. She's just one shy of tying Candace Parker's record of 12, which was done over multiple seasons. So just looking at it right now, if you had to put your pick in, who will win WNBA Rookie of the Year this season? And this is right now. It could change. Like, yeah. you know, of course, the season's going to go on. From just the way I like to play basketball, like, I would, my vote would be for Caitlin, but it's close. Like, I wouldn't be mad at either one of them, but the fact that there's a race is amazing. If you had to put your pick in right now. Uh, definitely, um, Caitlin. Um, and there's no shade uh, to Angel. It's just what Caitlin has to face on a nightly basis of, like, them trying to stop Number her. Number one on scattering points. Like, they, like, yes. you, like, <laughs> she can't get equal opportunity as everyone else because then she would average, th- I think she would average 25, 26 a game because... You're not trying to gear the scouting report to stop her. Like Angel Reese, I feel like they're not giving her as much of a strenuous assignment when it comes to scouting report because she's going to do what she does. She rebounds. It's hard to stop somebody who rebounds. They both have their flaws and strengths. You know, Caitlin's getting roughed up 
in her own way, you know, as a guard play. But Angels is getting... Choke slammed. Yeah, she's getting body, beca but because she's bigger, we don't see it. But you gotta remember, she's a post player. So that means she's taking a lot of cheap shots herself, yeah. right? She has to be, she, like, she's learning how to become a real offensive player because now she has bigger girls, defenders that know how to play defense. So it's harder for her to score versus someone like Caitlin because Caitlin can go get screens. She can, you, you go double and help, right? She can, she gets free more. Angel won't get free. Right, because she's posting up and there's somebody right. behind her. There. Right, so she's averaging a double-double. Caitlin's playing. They're both breaking records, playing. I, me, if it, if it stays the same way all the way through, I'm doing co-MVP, mm -hmm. co-rookie of the year. Yeah. Right, because it's, it's going to be hard to say one didn't do, one wasn't the rookie of the year. They're both, they're both at this point if, um... doing a great job at... Would you ever give rookie of the year to a defensive player? If their defensive impact was that that impactful, but we as the new media can yeah, create can the narrative, we do what we want. It's, it, we do right? what we want. It's, it's, <laughs> remember, it's easier. It's when you when you think about like a click, right? If I say Angel's better, right? We get all her clicks, and then all the Caitlyn clicks, right? That don't think that's better. They get they click get it. Yep. right. They get to click it and, and be mad. So I get double. If I go reverse, right? Mm -hmm and say, this person deserves it, Clayton deserves it, all the reasons. So it's easier when you're talking about media to just keep putting them against each other because right now the numbers say do yep. it. But business-wise, moving forward, it's, it's better to say they both won. Now both sides are happy. Both sides are still going to complain that their person should have won. Right. Yeah. Right? So you still get the same so thing. So y'all can be mad, but you, we're still elevating yeah, these. Well, people are going to be mad no matter what. What's up, y'all? I want to thank y'all so much for tapping in with me. And uh, make sure to click the link in my description down below because you're going to be able to claim your 30K bonus as soon as you sign up and deposit money. You're going to be able to claim your 30K bonus. And uh, you can start with, for example, $50, $100, $200, it's up to you how much money you want to deposit. As soon as you deposit your money, you can claim your 30k bonus down below in the link. And then you use your money and the bonus you trade with crypto. All right, y'all, so that was Gilbert Arenas, and he was speaking about Andy Reese and Caitlin Clark because right now, Andy Reese and Caitlin Clark, they're going viral and they've been doing so for the past couple of weeks especially after they got drafted and uh, they've been able to bring a lot of limelight to WNBA and for so long for many years now the WNBA have been complaining about that they don't get any spotlight but finally they're getting the spotlight that I guess that some would claim that they deserve and uh, we got more seats that are filled in arenas and more people that are interested in actually seeing what is going on at the WNBA that is definitely thanks to Amy Reese and Caitlin Clark because when they started their beef three years ago and it went viral because they you know, were on the court and they were basically you know, arguing. After that, when they went viral, that's when they became household names in the basketball world. And they were able to bring that over to WNBA. So they were able to bring that from the college basketball to the WNBA. And what you should know that some people are happy that this happened, but there's also a lot of people that are against this, that there's only two players that are getting the spotlight. And uh, some people are claiming that it's only Caitlin Clark that brought this to WNBA. But the truth is, both Caitlin Clark and Eddie Reese, they brought the spotlight to the WNBA. And uh, the clip of the show, yeah, that was Gabriel Arenas. He decided to speak on this, on this whole Andy Reese and Caitlin Clark situation. And I actually want to know what y'all think about this. So make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.